question of the bill sponsors. Is it your intention to focus this bill on the big major monopolists, or is it your intention to sweep in smaller players like a Mozilla, like a Brave, smaller players that are on no stretch of the imagination monopolist? Because if it's the former, I'm enthusiastically on board. If it's the latter, I have very serious concerns. In my view, the former. Well, I, I will take the representations from the, from the bill authors at face value, and, and I appreciate your, your willingness to work with me. And with that representation, I'll, I'll withdraw this amendment at this time and not call for a vote, but, but I look forward to working with your staff to ensure that we're targeting the big guys and not the small entrants, that, that it becomes – we want a scenario where the next innovator can topple the monopolist, and if we inadvertently – put barriers to entry or make it harder for a new revenue model to topple whoever the existing monopolist is, that, that's going backwards. And so with that commitment to work together, I, I will withdraw this amendment from consideration at this time. Amendment 22293 is withdrawn. Senator Kennedy? I, I wanted to ask Senator Blumenthal, um, I appreciate your comments, but tell me specifically why you think Ted's definition is too narrow, or Senator Cruz's definition is too narrow? If you look at the uh, amendment, Senator Kennedy, it has uh, a number of thresholds right. for applying. Right. I want to look at those thresholds more thoroughly and carefully to determine whether they serve the purpose that we share, which is to okay. go after the gatekeepers. And uh, for example, just speaking for myself, not for any other co-sponsors, uh, I would be loath to include a company like Valve at its number of users in this legislation. Uh, but I want to work with Senator Blackburn to know her views and other co-sponsors before we make decisions about what the threshold numbers should be. But uh, as I've said to Senator Cruz, our target here are the gatekeepers that are throttling innovation and preventing rivals and startups from coming to market, imposing a rent or fee, a VIG, as I've termed it, up to 30 percent, which increase costs to consumers. I think we share common goals here. Uh, Senator Cruz and his staff have been responsive to us, and I want to continue that work. So you just need some time to talk it through? Correct. Okay. Would you include me in those discussions? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are there any further amendments to come? Senator Cruz? Uh, Mr. Chairman, next I'd like to call up Amendment SIL-22251. Um, and this addresses an issue that, that Senator Lee raised earlier in this hearing. One of, one of the most disturbing trends we've seen in, in modern di digital age is the throttling by giant tech companies of thoughts or opinions or beliefs that are not fashionable, that they don't agree with. Uh, every American has a right to be heard. Every American has a right to live in accordance to their faith, to make the case to their fellow citizens. You don't have to be persuaded, uh, but, but we all have a right to argue for what we believe in, whether it is political views or whether it is our religious faith. None of these fundamental rights protected in the First Amendment uh, should cost a person their ability to live and flourish in the modern digital age. Uh, this amendment would simply ensure that, that app stores that are monopolists uh, would not be able to discriminate against apps based upon the political or religious viewpoints of the developer of the app or the app's users. It, it requires neutrality so that they are true public fora. And, and this is not a hypothetical. We've seen examples of some of the biggest app stores working together <coughs> to take an app off their platform because they did not like the speech that was being said there. Specifically, uh, Parler. Parler was created as an alternative to some of the big social media companies uh, because people who were conservative, people who were libertarian, were getting censored on the big social media sites and they wanted another place to speak. And we saw in, in conduct that, that, that was brazenly anti-competitive, that was brazenly, I think, contrary to existing antitrust laws, Apple, Google, and Amazon all simultaneously took Parler off their platforms. 
and said, you are not allowed to speak, You're not, your users are not allowed to speak because we don't like the content of what you're saying. Um, it's since become clear that similar, similar speech was happening at the time on Facebook, on Twitter, on Reddit, and yet they were not subject to that consequence. Parler was. Um, what happened to Parler was wrong. What happened to its users were, were wrong. And I recognize on this committee, there are members of, of this committee whose political views differ. Multiple members of this committee used Parler, engaged in Parler as a tool to communicate with our constituents. Even if you disagree with the politics of a particular speaker, whether it is on Facebook, on Twitter, or Parler, or somewhere else, members of this committee ought to be committed to the principle of free speech that our constituents have a right to speak and persuade each other, and that we should not be enabling modern-day oligarchs to discriminate against the free speech rights of Americans or to discriminate against religious faith. And so this amendment provides simply a neutral standard that you cannot discriminate against an app if you're a monopolist uh, based on either political views uh, or religious faith. And I would urge adoption of the amendment. I might just comment. Um, this is tricky territory, and we know it. I don't believe incitement to violence is protected political speech, nor do I believe anti-Semitic hate speech is protected political speech. That's my interpretation. And I think if we are opening those possibilities, we're in for a much different debate. Does anyone else seek recognition? Senator Blumenthal. Uh, since we're approaching the 11 o'clock hour, if we haven't passed it already, I, I will respond very briefly. Uh, this bill is not about political speech. It's not about uh, discrimination. It's really about protecting consumers. I am concerned about the way this amendment is written, uh, applying to non-discrimination against, quote, political or religious speech or viewpoints, which provides uh, a vast, broad reason that the potential anti-competitive practice could be justified by Apple or Google tying up action in the courts for years and years. And so I'm going to urge defeat of this amendment. Mr. Yeah, Chairman, a, a quick clarification. Um, Senator Blumenthal just suggested that this amendment would somehow provide a safe harbor for anti-competitive conduct. To the contrary, this amendment puts an additional restriction on the monopolist. So it's not a defense for the monopolist. It is an additional restriction that you cannot be discriminating against apps or users based on their political views or religious faith. So it, it, it is exactly the opposite of a safe harbor. It is an additional restriction. Questions on the adoption of Amendment 22251. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Leahy. No. Mrs. Hanstein. Mrs. Hanstein. Mrs. Hanstein. Mrs. Hanstein. Mrs. Hanstein. Mrs. Hanstein. No. Mr. Whitehouse. No. Mr. Bolsonaro. No. Mr. Coons. No, by proxy. Mr. Blumenthal. No. Aye. Mr. Graham. 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 Aye. Mr.